Morning, everyone. Welcome to the playoffs. Oh, this feels great. This feels great, doesn't it? This feels really special, even though it's a tournament we cast from home. This is the best Warcraft on the planet. And we're about to witness it. And this is pretty damn awesome. I'm beyond hyped. The day yesterday was kind of necessary, I feel, to just have this one day off to decompress a little, fill the mind with other stuff than Warcraft, to re-energize. How do you feel? Did you miss us yesterday? Did you miss the games yesterday? Well, yesterday were no games. Did you miss the game yesterday? Is the better question, I think. Unfortunately, by the way, today we are not joined by Snowkiss. She's busy. She's busy with business. Has to do a, a Hearthstone card reveal super show over in China, I think. That's uh, what she told me. So yeah, if you expected beauty and insights and knowledge, well, not today. <laughs> it's just me. But we will recap the tournament a little. I will give my predictions for the games that are about to come. And maybe you have some questions. Raise them. <laughs> nice to see you guys tuning in once again. So yeah, second last day of the tournament. Second last day of the pre-show. Should we do this more often? Hey, how are you, Remo Demo? Really? Really? I'm Neo, mate, but <laughs> I'm great, thank you. Uh, we will go through all the matches, we will go through all the predictions, but if you have any questions outside the games themselves, just let me know. And I will do my best to answer this, as we have to fill some content here today. <laughs> Ooh, um... I did some prep work. Can I show this to you? I think I can. So, whenever there's WGL, my prep looks like this. So, this is some Excel stuff. And this goes for all the players. And this is what I try to memorize for everyone. To give you some stats and whatever. So, yeah, we do prepare quite a bit. There we go. Greetings from Mongolia. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so this year's WGL. I wasn't too hyped initially, to be honest, because it's online and we aren't there. But I gotta say, this disappeared really quickly. And the reason for that is that all the players prepared like crazy. And we prepared pretty well. So it felt like dressing up using the button-up shirt in instead of my usual band shirts or Back to Warcraft shirts or whatever. I think everyone had their little tricks to make it f feel normal, like like a normal WGL. And that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, once I saw the games, it was just, okay, World Championship, let's dive into this. We saw these crazy games. Of course, Lynn vs. Moon stands out. That's without a shadow of a doubt. I think 1 to 0 versus Law Light was very cool as well, even though there were some mistakes. We had Axlord versus Fly as a super highlight. Infi versus Fly was really good as well, in my opinion. And Infi and TH, man. What the fuck? How is it possible that they don't play this entire year? Well, they did of course stay in shape for the team league and they did stream, but you know streaming is every it's, it is always different. Mm. And they are so good. Like it, it is abnormal that they're not competing for a long time and be that good. That says a lot about their mental state as well. Like that they don't need much prep, maybe, or that they can prepare in the matter of weeks. In a really crazy way. So yeah. Um, group A. Had Lawlight winning this. Which is pretty cool. Um, 
again cements the fact that he's, according to the Walker 3.info ELO ranking, second best player in the world. Closing in on 2,500 ELO, which is really, really rare that people break that ELO ceiling. Mm. He's, he's grinding so hard. I would love him to win the tournament, obviously, but yeah, winning 1-0 to zero was really good. I think Sock's performance is one of the more disappointing ones, I think. He did try in like half of his games, and he cheesed in half of the games. The question is, of course, if these cheeses work a little better, if people don't expect it from him, as 1-0 to zero said in the interview that he did. Maybe we would be sitting here like praising him like crazy and saying, okay, man, this guy, Naga first, what the fuck? This is going to revolutionize anything. But it didn't. And so he looks a little weaker than he usually is, I think. Poor Sog. For Alice, it was nice for him to take a map, but in Group A, I think the best players advanced. Uh, group B had... Moon, Lin, Linguagua, and Colorful. No surprises there as well. I think we saw a stronger Colorful than we've seen in previous WGLs. And I start to respect him more. <laughs> Which is not hard compared to his uh, like the WGLs before. He didn't choke, really. It was just that his opponents were better. And I think that shows you a bit about Colorful as a growing player, as an evolving player. T taking more responsibilities in LP Club and the contract now being renewed by LP Club, which is really nice for him and Fortitude for sure. If you're in a group with Moon and Lin, like third play is, is what you can expect, right? And he didn't end up last place like so many times before. So Colorful did well. Linguagua tried some funny stuff, I think... He showed a good... Mm, like, he represented well. It was just... Mm, some cheese ideas, good reactions, making this a little fun, you know? Yeah, not, not too much more to expect when you're in a group like this. Group C was probably... For me personally, I think for a lot of you out there, the most disappointing group because x -Lord is out. I'm not disappointed because of Exo's performance, not at all. Just the fact that he is out is something that um, yeah, killed a little bit of hype for me because when he started oh, this series versus Fly, I think that series, if you look at Netties now, that series, Exo versus Fly, could single-handedly change the meta in Asia because now they saw how strong it is, now they saw how to play it, and now they can refine it. And they do, like WFZ is playing crypto all the time. No. And I'm pretty sure we will see this more from Asia now. He showed them the way. In the interview prior to the tournament, he said, I want to confuse them as much as I can. Well, I think he inspired them rather than confusing. He was the wanderer with the torch in the middle of the night. So, yeah. Proud of x -Lord versus Focus was definitely not his best Warcraft. Um, but Ping, you know. And I really want to see x -Lord in Katowice. Like, judging from the performance here, he was prepared. He looked hungry. He looked excited. I really want to see this guy in the ESL Pro Tour Finals. So. Big surprise is Focus, right? Taking a map off of Infi as the only player so far. And it feels like everyone expected him to just be out, just get eliminated. But online tournaments, man, focus is kind of where he's supposed to be in online tournaments. And that is Round of Eight. Never super far, except maybe DreamHack Anaheim. Mm. But yeah, yeah, for an online tournament, this is a pretty much a normal performance. 
Vai fofoca o sangue. Yeah, in Orc Mirror, I think everything can happen. I'm not too sure if that tier 3 by Fly was necessary. If he plays straight up, will he beat Focus? In Orc Mirror is always so hard to say. So that was a little bit of a gamble. It could be Fly here. I think they are pretty much on even footing right now. Maybe Fly is a little better versus Orc. But it's also hard to judge. Like, Folk is also really good against Orc. So what do we know? All hypothetical. Group D, thank God Foggy made it again. That kid makes me so happy. So I hope he can surprise once more. It's the seventh time. It's the seventh time that he makes it into playoffs. In ten gold leagues. And in two gold leagues, he wasn't there. This is so impressive. Sparks can be so proud of him. But today, he's facing Infi. And I don't know how he's supposed to beat Infi, to be honest. I don't see a chance. But maybe it has to be me underestimating him for great things to happen. Because that's usually what I do and what happens then. So Foggy needs your energy, that's for sure. Foggy needs a million froggies in chat later, that's for sure. And then I guess Remo has to pray a lot prior to prior to Sunday. So I start the stream real quick. The Twitch one. God, this desk is a mess these days. Jeez. Hola. Good morning. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so we end up with these insane quarterfinals. We had some great groups, of course. But, like, some matches in the groups felt like a semifinal. Or, in case of Moon vs. Lynn, felt like a grand final of a really big... Online competition. Jesus Christ. Just noticing the fact that Knubbequakes has donated 4,000 euros this night. <laughs> <laughs> okay! Okay! That is so mind-blowing. Anyway, um, yeah, quarterfinals, Law Lyot then, I think it will be 50-50. Don't underestimate Law Lyot. He's really, really good in that matchup, second best in the world for sure, Lin. It's the question what he will play. He has a broader variety of strategies now that he can play, and it's all best of five from now on, right? It was double elimination, best of three, now we change into single elimination, best of five. And having more strategies, more variety in a best of five can help you a lot. And I'm not sure Lolliot has that ready. Will he throw in talents? Not sure, man. Not sure. I would give the edge a tiny little bit to Lin, but oh, mostly, like, not due to balance or strategies or shape or something, just because Lin is so experienced. And I think there's this... Hmm... How do I call it? There's so much pressure on Lawlight from himself that he finally wins a big one. And this might prevent him from making it into the semis. If he makes it into the semis, Infi or Foggy are waiting because that's the second semi-final for the day. I really hope Foggy has something prepared. Mm. He played against TH, so he practiced a shitload against Human. He knows exactly what to do and when to do what he wants to do. But it's Infi. Oops, the countdown on the stream is wrong. Give me a second, guys. Start time at 10. There we go. Pretzel music. Yeah, it's Infi. Like, against TH, he had a great start. 
against the AT the great start and then got too excited, too ambitious, too greedy, he wanted to close it out too fast. So that was a typical tier one player or tier like first there's the super tier and then there's tier one, right? So this is a typical tier one player mistake, I think. Trying to close out games too early, not being stable enough, um, not having the patience to choke your opponent out, but just going for the throat and then failing, unfortunately. If you can't fix that, though, maybe there's maybe there's something possible. I don't know. It's still Infi, and Infi looks scary. Infi looks very prepared. He, we only saw him in one matchup so far, but he defeated Law Lion already in WGTL on freaking Turtle Rock, so he knows what to do. Thank you, guys. Hey, Kante. Nice to see you here. Talked with Kevin about you two days ago or something. So, Moon 1 to 0. Everyone says it's a very one sided affair. I don't know. I got the feeling. Like, Moon is a dominator of the scene. There's no doubt about that at all. Like,. I will show you some stats on the main broadcast. It's nuts, guys. The streaks that he has, the stats that he has, the confidence that he developed here. This seems to be one of the strongest moons probably ever. And that says a lot. Right? He is the favorite for the playoffs, in my opinion. He's the player for the tournament. But it's also 1-2-0, having some time, and he seems really hungry. His group stage wasn't good, to be honest. Was like, really wasn't good. Not as we expect him to be. But he had two days to reset, and it already looked a lot better against Sock than it did against Alice or Law Light on the first day. So the longer the tournament goes, the better it gets. And I hope he can show us the real Necromancer, and I hope we don't see these cheese all-in style thingies. Just straight up good old Night Elf Undead, micro fights, kite the armies around the entire map, show us your brilliance, that's what I want to see from these two. And TH focus as the last quarterfinal. TH is the big favorite. His stats versus human, man. He's 10 and 2 this year versus human. <laughs> that's so sick. One was against Lin in the best of one. What was the second one, I wonder? TH versus Orc. Who defeated him? Lin in the best of one. Oh, then it's just him. Just one. Then it's... Ah, seven and one. Seven and one. Sorry, it's not ten and two. Seven and one. Duh. Got confused here for a second. Oh, right, seven and one. That's insane. And then we could get... We could get Moon TH. <laughs> we could get Lin in Fee Moon TH. Like, Korea's finest versus China's finest. I'm so freaking excited. So... Yeah, China Pride on the line for sure. Korea is once again the strongest region in the playoffs. Can China finally reach a grand final again after three episodes? We could see Win being the third player to defend the title. We could see Moon, TH and 1-2-0 winning the title as the first player for the third time. Infi and Lin could win their second title. Uh, Lolight Foggy Focus could win their first title. And Moon, if he makes the top three, by the way, is the first player to ever break $600,000 prize money. Pretty sick. So, we got like five minutes. If you have some questions, shoot them at me. Otherwise, we're gonna get ready. 
for WGL. Who's the favorite? Well, just said that, it's Moon. I think this answer can be answered, uh, this, this, this question can be answered at the same time for like 15 years in a row now. <laughs> With small downs, you know, but there was always sunshine after the rainbow, after the rainstorm. I don't know what it is. All right. Looks like there's nothing super urgent that I have to answer. So tomorrow, Snokers will be back. A little breakfast stream with me. And let's get hype for the quarterfinals. <laughs> <laughs> 